So, about two years ago, I made the choice to you know, come out of retirement and get back on TV. I know it sounds funny. I'd barely done anything as an actor, but uh, it's a decision I made. Uh, truth is, it was one that I was skeptical about for obvious reasons. Um, at the time, I had a pretty comfortable job. Um, I was working from home. I had a decent salary. I only had so many concerns, but um, there's a path that I decided to pursue um, even before I left school. And my mind never left that path. An opportunity presented itself and I took it. The rest is history. Now, truth of the matter is, virtually every other day I have people ask me just about the same question. So they get to see me on TV and the average person who sees me on TV hasn't seen me on TV in at least a decade. And there's one question I always get asked. How did you do it? I mean, it's like you came out of nowhere and you're on this massive show that's making waves on the continent. In summary, what they assume is that I'm an overnight success. And every time I get asked that question, I smile because I understand where it's coming from. You see, I realize there are a lot more, especially young people in Nigeria now who are disillusioned by the state of the country. You have more young people who are um, interested in making the quick buck, who believe that it's possible to sleep one day dead broke and wake up the next day multimillionaire. Now, this isn't me saying it's impossible. This is me saying it's unlikely that that will be the success story every young Nigerian will tell. So today I will share a bit of my overnight success story. But anyways, this was me um, roughly two years ago. I was a mechanic and I could barely speak English. In fact, most of the time I spoke Pigeon English. Um, life wasn't particularly pleasant. I mean, I have fond memories of my time as a mechanic, but let's just say some things are best forgotten. And this is me now. I am the... Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, I am a director in uh, a multi-millionaire company. I manage the Agric arm of the company. Yeah, I mean Agric runs everything. It's been, it's been an experience. Um, I'm the perfect example of a rags to riches story. I mean, it's pretty obvious. I only need to say so much. So what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to share with everyone the secret of my success, my overnight success, as it were. And I promise you, everybody, especially the young people, if you take my advice, because this is advice, again, I said, please, I, I, I can't handle lawsuits. I'm begging. I don't have money. If you take my advice, trust me, you will become an overnight success. It worked for me, it's possible or likely it could work for someone else. So here's my first point, or my first tip, as it were. Start small, but think big. Uh, but I have a clause to that. Uh, be ready to settle for less. And I'll explain why. I, I went for this audition. Again, fresh out of school, I knew nobody. I didn't even know Mr. Alcassim. I got there late on the first day, and they turned me back at the gate. And I was disappointed, because, I mean, big dreams. But I went the second day, and I got my chance to audition. Did I have expectations? Yes. Were my expectations met at the time? Not necessarily. But here's the thing. There's something I learned in school about performance, and it applies in a lot of what we do, media, showbiz, whatever you want to call it. See, there's, there's a mentality some people have, and this runs through even everyday society, that there are small roles and that there are big roles. In the theater, what they taught us is 
that there are no small roles. Every role is just as important as the other. We're having TEDx Mina today. I'm a speaker, yes. I seem to be one of the important people. Okay. But you have the guys behind the camera. I mean, if, if you didn't have the guys behind the camera, people wouldn't be watching us on YouTube. If you didn't have the guys who's organized the logistics, that I probably wouldn't be here. So everybody's just as important as everybody else. It's one of the first things I got to learn, and it's my first secret of overnight success. Now, I did get the lead role in my first job out of school, as incredible as it sounds. I knew nobody. I only had the experience from school. But I got the lead role. There were seven lead characters in my first performance job, and I was one of the seven. So I got the star treatment. Now, I was never, I never believed that I was more important than the Waka Pass actors. Those are people who just show up in one scene and you probably never see them again. Because I learned that lesson very early. If you don't have those small characters who just show up and leave, there's something that's not complete about the story. Fact, everybody's important. Let me digress a bit to those Waka Pass people. Truth is, if the mentality of the average person is that I am not successful if I don't have the big role or if I'm not one of the seven, there will be nothing to aspire to. If I came fresh out of school and what was at the back of my mind was that I wanted to be a lead and nothing else, I would never have room to grow. First secret to overnight success. For the person who is doing that small role, as it were, it's a compromise, yes. I mean, he had the choice to say, I wouldn't do this, because it's not big. But here's the thing, I know at least one person on that project, and Mr. Alkasim knows who I'm talking about. At that time, he was a Waka Pass character. Right now, that same person runs an NGO. He's literally never in Nigeria, because he's traveling the world. That was him thinking big, but he agreed to start small. I'll make this quick and move on. Find the niche. I know it's hard these days for people to stand out and be different from the rest. Yes, I studied theater arts. There were a lot of people who were equally talented like me. And it, it got hard sometimes standing out, but I got to realize that there's something different about every one of us. So I dedicated my energy back in school to pursuing areas of the arts that I believed I had strength in. So yes, I probably was a better performer than a technical person. So I focused my energies on performance and I found my niche. But this is the part of finding your niche that may be a bit weird. It's hard to be original these days. Because, I mean, there, there, there are a lot of people out there who do the same thing that you do, and there's always the temptation to be like somebody else. Truth is, it's not such a bad thing to be like somebody else. You have mentors, people you look at as examples, people you'd like to be like. It's not a bad thing to aspire to. But whatever happens, always remember that you're still a different person. Find a niche, yes. Find a, a part of your industry that you can focus on. You can even try to copy a person, but always remember that you are original as you are. There's something about you that will make you different from whoever it is you're trying to be like, or you're modeling yourself by. Second point. My third point, fail. I think it's important that we understand that it's important to fail. I meet a lot of people who say um, failure is not a part of their vocabulary. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. We know that song, a couple of us should know that song. So I ask myself this question. If you never fail, how do you understand what the absence of success is? It's a very simple question. If you do not fall, how do you truly experience what the pain of falling is? I failed, so to speak, over the years. Um, 
part of the reason why I went into retirement from performance was because I attended a couple of auditions and nobody got to call me back. And I felt like I failed. But uh, once that feeling was passed, it got to hit me. I needed to understand what it felt like being told no. And for me, that was a motivation to keep trying because at the back of my head, I always felt that there was something about me that made me different from even those people who got the yes. Now, if I always got the yes, I wouldn't understand this feeling. I'd never know what it would feel like to be in their shoes. But now I know better. A third secret of my overnight success. Fail occasionally. I won't encourage you to fail all the time. It's very demoralizing if you fail all the time. But be open to failing. It's not a bad thing. The fact that you fail doesn't make you a failure. It's like going to school and you don't prepare for a test and you fail. It doesn't mean you're stupid or you're incapable of passing the test. At that particular time, you just didn't pass the test. Get comfortable with the idea. My fourth point, leverage on community. I will speak only so much about this because, again, TEDx Mina is a perfect example of leveraging on community. I'm here speaking today because I maintained a relationship with one person for the past 26 years. Mustafa Ndaju here is my friend. We went to high school together in Abuja. I've known him since 1994. We've been in touch since 1994. He's the reason why I'm here. He is a part of my community. The same way right now everybody in TEDx has become a part of my community. There are people around you, people who can contribute to that big dream that you have. The sooner you realize that if these people are part of that success story or the overnight success story, the sooner you become a success. I hear these words being thrown around just about every other day, that I'm a self-made man or a self-made woman or I'm a self-made person. And in my head, I'm like, how does that even start to make sense? So my friend here is a rice farmer and he's a successful rice farmer. He's not a successful rice farmer because he's a successful rice farmer. He's a successful rice farmer because he's part of a community that supports his endeavors. If people do not work with him, he will not have rice to sell. If he doesn't have rice to sell, people will not eat. It's that simple. Leverage on your community. There are people around you who can support whatever endeavor you're in. Leverage on that community. It's the fastest way to get to where you're going to. And this is my last point. Unfortunately, I'll be breaking a lot of hearts. Overnight success is a scam. Just about every other day, again, please, no lawsuits. And this is, this is informational. It is not a law. Just about every other day, I hear motivational speakers talk about how if you take these 10, 20 steps um, in the blink of an eye, you will achieve your aim or become successful or become a millionaire. No offense to motivational speakers, but I think that's just about the worst idea you can give anybody. Again, I think a lot of this stems from disillusionment. You see, there are more people out here in the world now who, who have needs that have to be met. And they're not particularly patient because at the back of their minds, there's this thing that, that, that runs, that they're running out of time. It's, it's not a very comfortable feeling to live with. And I totally understand, I sympathize. But the truth of the matter is, the overnight success, is, it's actually a scam. It's the biggest scam anybody sells. Unfortunately, it's a very profitable scam because there are a lot of people who are making a whole lot of money from this particular scam. So yes, I still may solicit you know, your support and ask you to buy my book by the end of this talk, which is titled Demystifying Overnight Success. And I probably could make you know, a couple of millions from the sale of my books, uh, but I won't do that because I don't even believe in it. 
At this point, I'll go back to the beginning of my story. This was me two years ago. This is me now. You see, the interesting part of my story is that it took me 10 years to get here, not two years. So I kind of liked, or like, well, my talk was kind of a scam. I graduated from school. I graduated from the University of Nigeria in 2005. My first job was in 2005 with the BBC. I served in 2006, and in 2007, we began recording Waiting Day. It's taken me 10 years to be here today. Not two years, and not as some people believe, um, overnight. Life really doesn't work that way. Um, I made a personal promise to myself when I started working that I would not perpetrate this particular scam. I could if I, if I wanted to. I've had people who have encouraged me to perpetrate the scam. It's a, it's a particularly promising opportunity. You know, I, I also like you know, money, I like the millions, I like to live comfortable, I like to go on vacations. I like to be corrupt to my benefit, so to speak. But I won't do that. Trust the process. You see, people have come before you, and you have the luxury of garnering experience from people who have lived, who have gone through a lot of the same things that you go through. Have conversations with them. I still come back to the same thing, leverage on community. It's, it's, it's hurtful, and in my line of work, it's something I experience just about every day that we have older professionals who are not keen on sharing their experiences with younger people. For the most part, they feel these young people will retire them before their time. It's, it's amusing to think of. I think the older we become, it becomes clearer to most people that there's only so much time that you've been afforded as a human being. I, I wake up some mornings and I look back at my almost 40 years and I ask myself the one question, what, what really have I done as a human? One of the speakers said something about us forgetting or losing our humanity. I think that's probably the biggest problem that we have as humans. We forget that we're humans before everything else. It's okay to be selfish, no offense to my fellow scammers, as it were. It's okay to be selfish, but I think for me what's the most important that you know where to draw the line. We have needs and wants. I believe it's important that whatever information you share with people should be geared towards enriching them and bettering their lives because that's just about the only way you can end up bettering your own life. Thank you.